Russ? Several thanks to Linda Mary Floyd. Thank you very much. Also tonight, authorities in Washington hey, State are on the lookout for a who shot It was all right, but I just got a little frustrated there today. Oh, really? Why? What happened? Well, remember that story that I told you that I've been wanting to cover? Today, my boss talked to me about it. And he said that we wouldn't be able to air it anymore. Well, did he say why? He said it would only cause problems for the station. And he didn't want any trouble, but he really didn't specify. Well, that's unfair. You were told that you could cover anything you wanted. I know, and I have been trying to convince them. I rewrote the story three times already. Because they said if I gave out too much information, we might disturb the public. After the third review, they said it wasn't good enough to air. I don't know anymore. I thought working for a news station would be way different. I mean, isn't that what the news is for? To give out imp important information to the public? I'm just so frustrated. I know, I can see why. You know, I actually went over all of this in my political science class this semester. Oh, really? Then can you tell me why our information is so limited now? Sure, let me get my political science book so we can go over how the media works. Here it is, page 120. So you see, here in America, the media are private sector businesses, which are corporate owned. This can lead to bias information that is coming from these stations. Petrie states, there are a number of studies that suggest that the mass media's overwhelming bias is not liberal or conservative, but corporate, a category unto itself. Their number one goal is to make money. And with money comes monopolies. Bigger corporations buy out smaller ones and form a mass media institution. Another quote from Petrie, with the ownership being controlled by the hands of the few, ultimately it will be difficult for citizens to obtain accurate and unbiased information. So with the merge of all of these corporations, and like I said before, money was on their mind, many of the smaller stations that covered small cities and other metropolitan areas were eventually taken over. So in order to stay on top of the ladder, these corporations were now starting to determine the importance of the news and what stories were quote unquote important enough to air. So basically what Petrie says about the way media works is that today the news, is t um, the news that we see is tailored around American society and what they think is better for us. According to Petrie, their goal is to appeal to the largest audience possible. So an example would be TMZ and other entertainment shows, which are all referred to as infotainment. So this is most likely why your station would not let you air your story. They don't want you to disturb the public by giving them all of the facts at once. That is why they had you edit it so many times. They would rather give bits and pieces of information to the public thinking that it's better. The truth is that it leaves the public to be confused. I mean, how many times can you remember watching an important news coverage story and hear them say things like, this product contains serious health risks or dangerous side effects, but never really hear what they are exactly. This is where they are wrong. They are confusing the public by tailoring these stories to fit our needs when there really is no necessity. That does make a lot of difference. Maybe I should go back to school and learn maybe a little more of this political science stuff, huh? It definitely is an option if you really want to inform the public with facts. Political science is the way to go. Sounds like a good idea. Now let's go get some dinner. For sure. All this talking has made me so hungry. <laughs>